his final pass, he gave you a boner, then this is the podcast for you. Join Caleb's beefy and meaty voices, fuck, cry, right, your pussy for ultimate pleasure. The guys give honest reviews and don't engage in too much fanboy winkery. Keep rocking Irvine's assless chest, fellas. You guys rock. From Robo, Utah, <laughs> this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schwein. Yeah! This yeah. is Ultima Final Fantasy. Bing, bing. Welcome to another episode of Ultima, Ultima Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy, the ultimate inequality Final Fantasy podcast. I am your host, Caleb. What do you mean by inequality? In equality. Oh, inequality. Yeah, we are equal here. In equality. God right. damn it. You can't say it. You can't have the word in before equality or else it's going to sound like Fine. inequality. The ultimate PC podcast. How about that? The ultimate PC. <laughs> well, well, here's why. All right, my name is Joe, by the way. Go ahead. This week, we're going to be doing... The second version of the pinup contest. Long ago, when the show was much less streamlined and way more open and just an orgy of whatever we wanted. Okay. Mostly food, I would assume, at the I time. F- I feel like I feel like it is still that way. <laughs> Kinda, but we are more and we structured. hide it under jingles. Yeah, the jingles yeah. are what we acknowledge as structure. Yeah, that's what we acknowledge as structure. And we get a lot of the um, uh, non-Final Fantasy talk out of the way through Nude Clan. That's true, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what Getting Fat used to be. It used to be the, okay, let's talk about everything that's not Final Fantasy now so that we can just talk about Final Fantasy. Uh-huh. But there was a time where we did a pinup girl contest for the podcast. And, of course, Quistus was our champion. I wish I could go back and see Beatrix then I would have made it Beatrix I believe but who knows Mm. but today I have decided it's time to do the other half of the spectrum we're gonna do the (sighs) ultimate pinup guy contest today yeah Final Fantasies 1 (laughs) through 15 Um, we're gonna go through the men that I have selected personally oh uh, there's a I would like to also say that you also selected to do this episode. It's true, I did. So, I don't know, Caleb. I think you might be harboring some uh, some some things. Yeah, inside of an old closet. I, I hate to disappoint, <laughs> Joe, but uh, <laughs> this is purely because I didn't want to watch another one of those episode blah blah blahs for FF Seven today. I just I was thinking about it and I was like, I just don't want to do that right now. Oh, you I don't, wanna, don't. Not right now. No, after the last one, like, oh yeah, episode depression. Yeah, episode fuck the game. Love on Advent Children is what they should have called it because mm. um, it continued the emo cloud instead of the, uh, you know, like cloud from seven, the slightly dickish uh, whatever cloud. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Before we get into too much of that, where are you in Final Fantasy 11? Before we get into too much of that, I want to say that some picks just went through and I did beat Dylan at our fantasy movie league. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. I didn't beat you, though. You're still in second place. What? I'm in second? Yeah. Um, JJ's Cineplex is first. You're second. I'm third. And I... James. Uh, <sighs> Dylan is fourth. <laughs> so my my research on what movies are going to make what... Uh, ah, that... It pulled through. I know this has nothing to do with Final Fantasy, but it did just come through, and I want to share that now. Uh, and I feel good. I feel that good. Fucking <laughs> James. I hate... God, why him? That's all right. I can lose one week to him. <laughs> okay. Final Fantasy 11. Yes. Where are you? Um, now. Join Fantasy Movie League, too. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, we. You have been playing a lot this week, and I've been playing kind of a, only a little. And I played a few hours yesterday, and I'm going to play some more tomorrow. Um, but we did get through all the imper murders, um, all those stopping points. Yeah. We got through a very tough battlefield, um, that took quite a few tries and we had to get Crinital on in order to, uh, to, um, to take care of it. Yeah. We didn't have the power to do it ourselves. No, it was, no, it was a rough battle. And so I'm a little concerned with like the battles coming up later on. Um, but until then, uh, 
I think I'm in like the late part or I'm almost, I'm in like 3.6, which is kind of like the last little run of, of part three of right. five, um, in secrets of a duel in, and I believe you're in early part four. Yeah. I'm like almost to a 4.3, which is the next dungeon fight. Um, oh, okay. I've been running quite a bit of cutscenes and um, just keeping up on my imperimeters um, spending because we don't, I've, we don't have any more blocks. We don't, but the bailed is useful. Did oh, you go okay. to those shops? Uh, I saw the shops. I looked at them. I looked at the sword first and I went, oh, I have a better sword anyway. And then I just went away. But the I armor. know they're there. The armor is better than everything I had. Was it? Yeah. Every item I had okay. was swearing and oh. my the axe too. Huh. I didn't buy an axe from the marketplace. Did you? Did you buy your sword from like the, uh, did you buy it from the records of eminence guy or did you buy it from? I the, got the special record of eminence thing where I got the really big, nice pieces of armor and, uh, equipment. Oh, was that at the end of? Yeah. The very end of all that shit. That oh, are you sure it's not better? Like, did you check the next pages? I'm sure that the sword I looked at is not better. Okay. But in the, the weapon I've been using and I know it's like a third tier weapon for red mage, but since I've been using it, it's just like, you're no powerful weapon. in it. Yeah. So you can't go. Back, um, uh, I've been using swords and that was the sword that had red mage that I saw first and it oh, wasn't okay. as good. So I'm not sure there might be the, dudes who sell with bald that are better bald is a currency by the way um but uh, i i haven't explored it thoroughly yet i just saw what they were and i was getting a freaking sinus headache um, oh, okay. playing this game yesterday so i didn't play more than like three hours yeah i uh, i actually spent all of my my bald on um <laughs> on items in the game I, I bought a bunch of maps first which was kind of I don't know, not 100% necessary because we have Windower, but it is easier to pull up the full map and look at it there because sometimes Windower's map like wigs out on you and it zooms in like a shitload. Yeah, but you I can try zoom to, right out. Yeah, you can, but <laughs> it's, it's, not as, it's not as useful for me. Okay. Like it is when I'm just doing a quick glance, like, oh, okay, I need to get up here. But if I'm like really looking at the map, I prefer to pull up the actual one. I haven't had a problem yet yeah. with, with Windower. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like the, the big ones more sometimes. For the most part, though, I do just use the little window or map. So I picked up a bunch of those, and then I upgraded all of my equipment. Everything is better. Uh, my my attack went from plus 90 from items and equipment to plus 110, I think. And I'm doing a little more damage. Everything looks cooler. I look like an Adulin. I'm, you know, went in. That's good. Went in Adulin. <laughs> do as the Adulins do, right? I would say we're both, I mean, we're in three of five or the beginning of four of five, but... Yeah four is fucking long it is so we're looking at we're both about halfway through um seekers of a duel and with no blockades that we know of in the way yeah um except for maybe i think there's one item quest which you had troubles with yeah and then um some boss fights which uh if anything like our last ones may give us trouble in the future but that means that uh seekers of a duel in and an ff11 wrap-up episode the final um <laughs> the, I, what do we got like a funeral for 11 or or some sort of yeah it, it, it'll be soon i think four yeah. expansions and a funeral or something like that yeah well we got um yeah four expansions and a funeral we actually have uh Rhapsody's left we do yes. that'll be like one day um i would also like to give a shout out to a player in ff11 i was okay. out there shouting looking for people to help me craft this item because i ran across a quest that required one of four things or five there were five options that were randomly chosen by the quest by the algorithm or whatever and of course it picked the one that I had to craft to get and I don't craft because I'm not disgusting and I didn't have a million All hours right. to donate. So uh -huh. I reached out to everybody. I called out. I was like, Hey, do you craft? Hey, do you do this? Do you do that? Do this? Do that? And finally, this guy named Tenov said, yes, I will craft this for you. It was actually him on another account. He had like three accounts. It was crazy. And I don't know how he was playing with all of them, but he's like, trade it to this guy. And I traded it to him, and he's like, it's actually me, but just trade it to him, and I'll make you the <laughs> item. And he did, and then I went and just did the quest. What? Yeah, it took me oh, like wow. an hour, though, to find someone. It took us longer when we were looking for an alchemist. That, that's true. Yeah. The alchemist was much worse. But I do feel like if we can, if we pick this up, I mean, we can get through this FF11 in the next few weeks, I would say. Yeah, I would, I would give it two or three weeks. Um, um, because we can do rhapsodies, like you said. We can just do an 11 marathon and do rhapsodies. 
I think. <sighs> when do we want to? Do we want to do a marathon tomorrow? Oh, um, I'm behind you, so it's kind of a pain, but if we can get uh if we can get credit all on board yeah we should do a marathon okay and uh that way we have three of us to do the battle it's like the only days that i'm playing 11 are on friday and sunday and i did not get enough time on friday yeah um, i might i might have to cancel plans and just do a marathon i want to get <laughs> i want to get through this game so bad i don't need you to cancel plans for it they're tentative plans they're tentative oh, okay. especially now now they're definitely oh all right uh because i we just need to we need to get through 11 we need We've to get spent, through 11 so that i can have my life back yeah and i want to friday I, or sunday and you'll be able to to play um 12 yeah, i can play revenant wings on the fucking train which i ride four hours a day so like there's time to fill oh yeah and i can't play 11 on the train just on a whim i have to yeah. like set up my entire 11 viewing experience because it's on my pc you're right um which is another reason like it's kind of another reason why i still have i still have consoles is because i like sitting on the couch like sitting on the couch um is your thing is my thing or like sitting on my bed but sitting on that fucking terrible office chair playing the pc game is always kind of rough yeah um but i don't know man i don't know i'm i'm ready i'm ready to put 11 behind me uh did you know limit break actually i haven't listened to the episode yet limit break radio uh, our friends over there they actually did um an 11 episode recently really yeah oh wow like an 11 like a goodbye to 11 or something like so that. so they finally did it huh they finally yeah. did their hey we're not doing 11 <laughs> anymore podcast because so. you said they just kind of stopped right uh we yeah they just kind of stopped with 11 yeah and then started up on 14 like a, a year later or something like that right we had which, an interview with the guy <laughs> right yeah so it's it's weird but they finally a nero finally got him to do it I i'm guess. not sure if it was a nero who was talking about it when i read the description but uh, oh okay well one of them at least some of the hosts went back played the rest of 11 and then had a uh, oh yeah i remember um Escalia said he was running a couple of them through some content <laughs> and uh I guess that must have been what it was. They finished it finally. Must have been. Wow. Only only a little bit before <laughs> us. So before we get to some news, um, you can check us out at youtube.com slash ultimate final fantasy. Facebook.com. <coughs> Sorry, I got a cold. Slash ultimate final fantasy. You can support us on Patreon. One dollar a month gives you the episodes as soon as we're done mixing them. Yes. Uh, we owe some episodes, so please, God. Yeah, tell us, us, us Tell us your availability. If, yes, uh, if we, we want you an episode. Twitch.tv slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Uh, and you can tweet me at Joseph Degolier. Me at UFF Podcast. And last but not least, our website, UltimaFinalFantasy.com, which, by the way, Shinru is now posting um, news every Friday for yeah. the week. And so if you want to get some more FF news, that's the place to do it. We also pull news from Shinru. So thank you very much, Shinru, for uh, what you do as far as the news is concerned. Please join our forums. Uh, just go to UltimaFinalFantasy.com, click forums, and you're going to be there. Let's get to some news. Well, sure. first, though, we want to plug the phone line that we <laughs> oh, was, shit. was preciously used today. <laughs> this is a rarity for us. Please give us a call at 385-204-3921. That's 385-204-3921. News, news, news. So joyfully today we have we have another trailer. <laughs> oh God! I can never get tired of the trailers. I'll tell what you. What do we have a trailer for? Um, this one looks like it's going to be a trailer for the beloved World of Final Fantasy. Another I know another trailer. I know for how, World of Final Fantasy. <laughs> I know how excited you are about this. Oh, I'm so excited twice. I know. I, I realize you're having problems with the window, and that's why it's taking a little while. No, it's fine. <laughs> We're cool, bro. We're cool. Yeah, I know. We're cool. I'm cool. All right, man. You ready to see another chibi-filled uh, trailer? Yes. All right, let's, let's watch do it. it. It's going to be rated E10. Oh, let's turn that down. All right, so we got some uh, some chibi kind of dudes. These guys actually... No, this isn't the chibi one. Sorry. No, it is. Jesus. They're... Who's not chibi? I don't... Okay, they're not chibi. Okay, they're... They're just anime. Okay, they're still like kitty anime. Right, yeah. 
Okay. Oh, oh, straight up anime. Yeah, we went into an anime section. I wonder if that's going to be part of the game. Are those going to be the cutscenes? Did they just uh, did they decide that um, the CGI cutscenes were too expensive and they had to do this? Maybe. I mean, the game is supposed to be um, insanely long, so I think that might be part of it. So, yeah, that was kind of a little tiny teaser. It just had a, a few moments from... Um, from the game didn't look like much gameplay was in that trailer but um yeah uh but whatever what can you do so it's like october when that's coming out right uh yeah something like that i don't know dude i i've thought about pre-ordering um some of these newer ones but i i just don't want to throw out the money for them i did pre-order 15 yeah the deluxe oh i don't uh, (laughs) don't uh, shut up i actually do need to (laughs) buy my own copy because that's an xbox one version that he said he's gonna send me so i got him I'm basically going to have to have Dwayne buy <laughs> the good version for PS4 and then we'll just trade is what will happen. Okay. All right. It's so still fucking awesome. I know it is sweet and I thank you for that. Uh, World of Final Fantasy also is adding snow to its cast. So if you couldn't get enough of them in Final Fantasy 13, hit up that World of Final Fantasy. <laughs> Sarah. Uh, that is uh, October 27th. Yeah. We're going to have to do a Sarah count for... Uh, for this game as well. I, I did that for a while on 13 and it got to like over a hundred and I wasn't even halfway done. I think it was crazy. You know, I haven't, uh, I know it's been a while. We probably brought this up earlier. Um, but Jurassic Park, the lost world, there needs to be like a, <laughs> like a montage of all the Sarah's in Jurassic Park, the lost world mixed with, um, all the Sarah's from final fantasy, uh, 13. And if there's another piece of media that had a shitload of people calling out the name Sarah, uh, we should also have that in there. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Sarah, the Sarah, 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 Sarah. I bet you we could, that's do, what it'll sound like. We could probably do some Terminator, the Sarah Connor. I don't know. Did she ever, is anybody ever calling out for her? No, I, it's more, they normally just use her full name because they're robots most of the time. Okay. Like Sarah Connor. Sarah you know. Connor. Yeah. We could just do the Sarah part. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll look into it. We definitely will. So, <laughs> there's another trailer for Mobius Final Fantasy and it highlights the addition of the co-op multiplayer mode, the English version on today's update. Of course, there's another trailer but it's yeah, but a Mobius mobile game. is already out. So if you want to see the new trailer for Mobius Final Fantasy, you can Google it. <laughs> so apparently they had a poll. This is kind of a weird offshoot of the news that Shinru posted, but I, I kind of think it's cool. It's a poll from September 7th, 2016, and it asks from Game Facts, actually, sorry. And it asks, how many times have you played and beaten Final Fantasy 7? The options are more than 10 times, between 5 and 9 times, 2 to 4. Just once, that was good enough for me. I've started playing it, but never beaten it. I've never played Final Fantasy VII, not once. Oh my god, out of 20,000 votes. Yes. Jesus. The number one was between two and four times, <laughs> which I believe is accurate for you and I as well. It is accurate for you and I, yeah. I think I've beaten it three times, um, and I think you're around that too. Three times as well, yeah. Um, the second placed one is <laughs> never played Final Fantasy VII, not once. And then the third place coming in at 21% of the votes is I've started playing it, but never beaten it. So, cool. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, wow. If only, like, all 20,000 of those people were like, have you ever heard of Ultimate Final Fantasy? I know. And then it would have been... The Ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. And then it would have been, like, totally... Who hasn't, right? <laughs> right. So uh, yeah. there's another little bit of Final Fantasy XIV news. Apparently there's a nice little preview of its upcoming main scenario quests and yeah. a new dungeon. So they're coming out with a new patch. Um, it looks like... September 27th. They're yeah, sep- coming up with a new patch. Um, so I got something with this. So it's not Final Fantasy fourteen, but it is Final Fantasy eleven. There was an update last week. And you know what it does for us, Schweiss? What's that? It allows us to ride mounts in many of the areas that we couldn't ride mounts in the week before. Oh, cool. So if you're in an area of Seekers of Adulin. Oh, wait, whoa, Seekers? Yeah. What? In the Seeker areas, you can ride mounts in, in many of them. There were, I think there was one or two that I wasn't able to ride a mount in um, the other day, but I was able to ride mounts in the other ones. Wow. Yeah. 
That is that is crazy. So the two new dungeons that they're adding are called Zelfatal and the Great Gubal Library, which is a hard dungeon. Um, they both require an item level of at least 210. Oh, what? To enter. I think mine's like 120 or some shit. That's oh. sick. In, in what? In 14 or in 14? 11? In 11, mine's like 111. Mine okay. sucks in 11. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, if you guys want to hear more about that, I'm sure Limit Break Radio um, went crazy over it. And... Let's see. Apparently Final Fantasy XV's Platinum Demo and Kingsglaive are getting free OSTs for PlayStation Plus users in Japan. <sighs> where's our free Kingsglaive? Yeah, where's our where's our soundtrack? <laughs> so that's cool. If you're in Japan, hit that up. Um, you got a nice little original soundtrack. Looks like it has six, excuse me, six tracks from the demo and will be available to PlayStation Plus subscribers in Japan starting September 13th. So only a few days away. You'll need to download an app for the soundtrack, which apparently also comes with some visuals for the demo. So it's not uh, it's not just just for that. And here's some nice little uh, visuals they got here. Looks like the track listing for Kingsglaive is quite a bit longer. We've got at least 22 songs. Um, cool. So if you're yeah. in Japan, enjoy and uh, thanks a lot, Square. We don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Some more screenshots like we talked about last week. We have uh, more guns and stuff from uh, Final Fantasy 15, which we didn't even think we were getting guns until last week <laughs> for this game. Uh, so that's really cool, actually, because most of the time with Final Fantasy games, except for 12, you pretty much had a certain type of weapon with the character that you had. Yeah. Um, and so we thought we were going to get the same thing um with uh with Noctis and all the rest of them but it looks like uh Noctis can, yeah, uh, can in fact have a, a useful weapon. Yeah, it's looking like this first <laughs> picture we have here is Noctis <clears throat> holding a revolver. So Noctis is a big fan of Red Dead Redemption, I would assume. Oh, okay. Right. There's another one where he's holding this big ass rifle and you can go into a snipe mode apparently. That is cool. You can just hunt animals. <laughs> Now, is this Final Fantasy-esque? Maybe not, but... No, there's hunts. There are, there are hunts, but this and is... And this is supposed to be like a, a quasi-modern Final Fantasy. That's remember. true. Um, this one, it looks like he's holding the BFG, um, some sort of <laughs> massive weapon. Uh, circular saw. That's disturbing. Oh, wow. What a, I would love it to be in, like, Doom mode, and you could turn up the... the blood level in yeah. 15. So that's cool. <laughs> uh, look forward to that if you guys are into the realism that Final Fantasy 15 is supposed to bring us, which of course I am. It's still weird to me, though. It's weird to accept something like that. Um, just, uh, I don't know. It's been so long since we've had guns. So there is a new Final Fantasy 15 interview out um, where the director... Our friend, Hajime Tabata, talks about uh, improvements on frame rate, the map, the DLC, weapons, and a bunch of more stuff. It's so a big I, old... I assume this comes out of the, uh, they're <laughs> putting the game back and doing an update, or they want a better day one release of the game. Yeah, um, so the question, the first question that came up that I was interested in is he, the interviewee asked, could you talk in more detail about the improvements the team is doing to the master version that was recently showcased. And Hajime said, you won't really see a huge difference from Gamescom today because it's only two weeks since then. So the build that we have here has been improved slightly, but the biggest difference is that you have a bit more freedom in steering while driving. Oh, <laughs> that is one of the biggest changes you'll see in the build that's going to be available. Um, today is what he was saying. Oh, okay. So I guess there were some mechanics with that that were running into problems. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to read I mean, this whole interview. Such a, it, yeah, yeah, it is a big interview, and I haven't read it, so I want to get into that soon. But um, I, it it is such a big game, and it seems like most of the development was in the last two years, uh, like the biggest chunk of it. So uh, yeah, and I'm surprised that they don't have more problems. <laughs> like if they're willing to release a game by now. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I the way I look at it is the same way as Final Fantasy 13, where they came out with a demo and they basically built the game based on the demo. So these guys are they're really good at what they do when they're doing it. But if they're, it, it's like the, the saying that. You know, idle hands of the devil's workshop like they're just dicking around for years right and then finally they're like okay we need to make a game so they make the game 
that's what they did with ff13 right they made the demo and then they built the game on the demo in like five months six months yeah something like that. It was less something than a year like that. and the thing was in development for <laughs> way longer than that so i assume it's something kind of like that but we just multiply it by about three ish so it's going to be three times as long to create the game you know that's interesting i think yeah you're probably right that that's what they were doing and how long did uh did that thing come out like a year ago maybe that demo yeah Disgay. yeah it's been a while um now i do think they had more planned in Disgay than the 13 guys had before uh the demo for 13 came yeah and what we've i believe so what we've been seeing seeing. kind of proves that too um but that is kind of concerning like shouldn't they they need to change how they develop that (laughs) yeah it it seems really maybe do like a series of in-house demos and decide upon what the game should be. Right. If I, I guess, you know, if they got a release schedule, though, and they're probably put under a lot of pressure. Well, especially after nine years of developing Versus 13. Yeah, no f- fucking what? What? So I, I assume it's kind of a big deal to get the Can game Can you believe out. that 8, I think, Final Fantasy 8 took two years of development, maybe? Like, it, it wasn't even that much. Yeah, most of the first, all of the first six, I think, were a year. Yeah. Maybe yeah, a little they were, more than a they year. Were. Now, 2 was kind of rushed, and so... Yeah, 2, I think, came out less than a year. Yep. It was it like came one out day less than, a year. less than a year from one, Yeah, which is nuts. Like, And that's it's still a good game. Like, It still works. It's got its problems, obviously, but um, it's crazy how, how long it's become. It's been this lumbering beast for so many years. I mean, 12 to 13, that's three years. Was, I don't even think 10 took that long to make, though. No, 10 from 9 to 10 was like a year and a half. Two years, maybe. I think Yeah, t- in release time. I don't know how long. Like, I think they announced all the games at the same time. Like, 9, 10, and 11, they announced all at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and they so they had been working on 9 for a long time. But 10, I don't think they had actually been... I don't think 10 was that rushed of a development. I, they or, just did I, it. Like, I think it was only... I, they must have only been in development for maybe two or three years. Yeah. Which, which is pretty nuts for as good of a game as 10 is. Uh, yeah, I know. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this thing. It's like, obviously, the time <laughs> for development, th- there's something to do with like what exactly they're trying to accomplish right I, develop the longer the longer you're developing something the longer you're working on it i feel like the it, more bureaucratic the yeah the more bureaucratic be. it can be and it also you can lose focus of your initial um, point of contact what you initially wanted to do may be lost over the nine year span that it took to do it because everyone's like oh well, what about and obviously we had a director switch yeah what if we do this instead what if we add guns and we had the snipe function and like they go into big detail on these offshoots and sometimes that can pull you away from your initial uh, drive the initial thing you wanted to accomplish with the game now we don't know if that's done that and we will never know i love the demo and if the game is anything like the demo then i'm gonna be happy with the game as far as the gameplay is concerned so you know what i i don't know i don't know like i'm concerned that they that they seem to have rushed it like they did with 13 yeah um, then well, again, it's still not as rushed as 13 because 13 was like seven months or something. 13 like that. is not a bad game either. I don't, yeah, I don't think 13 is a bad game in any sense. Um, and really it only pales when it's in comparison to something. Yeah. Um, like other there's, games, there's many aspects of 13. <laughs> the, <laughs> I uh, mean, other final fantasies, it, it has some um, issues with, I think story that are the biggest thing. Yeah. And as far as extra content, and of course we talked about that in the 13 review, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I'm still I'm still holding out for 15 and I'm way more excited for 15 than I am for World of Final Fantasy. Well, yeah, I feel like <laughs> most people are probably in that boat. I don't know though. Let us know if you're We've not heard other us. we've heard other comments. We have, but it was mostly um the Final Fantasy 12 thing. I think that's mm-hmm. the one that I saw the most love for. It's the 12 Which is odd roster. because when we started this podcast, 12 was not loved. Well, I don't know. I think time has changed. Times are changing. Yeah, public, except for public opinion is going. Oh, it was actually pretty good. Except for thirteen. Thirteen's not changed. No, yet. thirteen has been just uh, on everybody the bottom of everybody's uh, tire tread for this entire time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's going to change, but hopefully, hopefully it becomes one of the early ones that are really rough. Okay, Schweiss, is it time for us to question our own sexuality? Yeah, let's do it. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Some of those smooth, smooth beats. <laughs> 
welcome to Ultima Final Fantasy pinup contest number two. Bro hour. <laughs> we're gonna. Do. We're, <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. We're gonna, we're gonna run this the same way we ran the first one, where we go through each of the series, we pit up the two games that are connected to each other. In a uh, playoff style format. Okay. So it's going to be Final Fantasy One contestants versus Final Fantasy Two contestants. Who are our contestants for those games? Well, FF One, we have Garland and the King. Okay. Which there's very little. Um, FF Two contestants, I would say, Furion, Gus, and Yosef. Oh yeah. Okay, so FF1, Garland versus the King. Yeah. What kind of shitty uh, fucking nominations are that? Look, man, the Red Mage and the other dude characters, the Warrior and Warrior, shit like that. Warrior, Red Mage. They don't really have a definite presence in the game. They're only if you what choose about the those dark classes. <laughs> I guess we could put the dark. All right, all right. Dark elf will go in. Uh, no. Um. Jeez. You know, if if the king were some sort of uh, Sean Bean, King Regis character, which he could be. I mean, all we see are some sprites. Uh, then I could say that yes. Um, in fact, we could put the king. I think. I don't think Garland is sexy at all. You don't know what he looks like under there. And um, there's something about... I mean, you could say Garland's a bad boy and he sings. He's like a music... Oh, I get it. He's a bad boy. He's like a bad boy musician character, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to say Garland for the win of FF1. You're going to say Garland? Yeah. Which one are you going to vote for? I don't know. I was I was trying to explain the king because I don't want to vote Garland, but then at the same time, Garland has personality. Garland's a bad boy. Garland's musical. He's got to get the chicks in comparison to the king. Yeah. Of course, the king is the king. Yeah, I mean, you remember the king uh, from FF9. You remember, uh, well, at least, yeah, Sid from FF9. He was definitely getting the chicks. And then he got turned into an oglop for it. So, infidelity is a thing in Final Fantasy. Oh, you could. That does kind of give you hell the king. Yeah, it does give you a reason to vote for the king. <laughs> All right, I uh, I will I will seed, and uh, we'll go with Garland. That's disgusting. All right, Garland is the <laughs> FF one contestant. Okay, FF two, Furion guy. No, <laughs> or, <laughs> or Joseph. Oh, I think I think this is clear here. Joseph is kind of old. He is. Um, he's kind of bald. And he's like a big tough guy, and I think he'd be a cool dude to hang with. But I don't know if he'll be getting the chicks as much as Furion will be, being the young, handsome warrior character. And of course, we know that Furion was <laughs> he he was um, almost seduced by um, a character in Final Fantasy II. Yeah, he was. He was going to go get it on. And so I'm going to go ahead and go with Furion is probably our winner for Final Fantasy II. Guy, unfortunately, Gus Gus, he's too damn. He's stupid. um. I don't think he should be involved in this pinup contest. <laughs> he is a ripped dude. He is the oh, muscle man. Oh, he's huge if you see the uh, Amano artwork. Yeah. For him. But you remember, I remember that thing you put together with every line of his dialogue throughout the game. The guy's an idiot. <laughs> he's he's hit his head one too many times throughout and he, his... and he like talks to animals. Yeah, he's that's kind a, of a freak. That's a little weird. I'm going to go Furion as well. Furion, okay. And between those two, my vote's going to be Furion. Oh, yeah. Furion, I think, is the winner for uh, the first block. I think Furion, as far as Final Fantasy 1 and Final Fantasy 2 sexiness goes, and unless you're into, like, really sexy gay pirates, which it could be, yeah. it, that could be the case with Final Fantasy 1, we don't know. I think Furion is clearly the winner. All right. So Furion will move on to the next round. Garland is eliminated. <laughs> We're going to move on to bracket number two. The Final Fantasy three contestants are Ingus, Ark, and Luneth, all children. Just makes this really fucking weird. <laughs> uh, you think? Yes. We don't want to have the guy that turns into a bird? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, won't, I won't do him. That was pretty funny, though. 
I am Birdman. <laughs> yes. I believe is the line I had for that guy. Yeah. Um, out of these guys, I don't know. I think Ark is kind of like a weird, sort of nerdy guy. He's the he's the guy I made the white mage because I felt like the girl in the party was more powerful than him, and she was. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say he's the first to get cut from this list. Uh, he, yeah, I think Ark's cut. Honestly, Ingus is like a fucking waste. You think so? Uh, yeah. Let's... Dude, I made him a tank with two fucking shields. I think it was Ingus, and I could be wrong here. I he's think it was Ingus guy. that took for fucking ever to it switch was. parties. So it was. because Ingus is a slow, lazy fuck, I'm gonna go have Luneth, who is very similar to. Uh, Furion, so we'll see. Extremely we'll see similar. Uh, Final Fantasy IV contestants are Cecil, of course, uh, Kane, Sid, Yang, Edward, and Edge. Ooh. I think Edge is eliminated simply because he's a child. Um, he's a... Well, we never see his face either. So there's that. I can't. We can't eliminate Edward because he is kind of a smooth guy, even if he is the douche. Um, he does get the chick in the game. He does get the chick in the game, but I will tell you, man, he is so not masculine. And he couldn't keep her alive either. So Unlike he... Garland, who's super masculine musician, you know, like a, like a, I don't know, like a Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Uh, but Edward is, is more like a, I don't know, who's that American Idol? <laughs> what is his name? I don't know. Oh, fuck. I don't know, I'll think of his name later. I don't... I honestly... I'm gonna eliminate Edward. I, I say, uh... Ixnay on the Edward. Alright, I can... I can second that. I, I think Edward doesn't belong. Um, Sid, I also think doesn't belong. I just thought that'd be a funny one to have, since he's <laughs> very oddly dressed in Final Fantasy IV. Yeah, I think Sid's out. I'm sorry. Um, so it's really between Yang, super muscular monk dude. Yeah. But as we all kind know... Kind of an older guy, though. As we all know, old monks... I don't think I don't think there's too many chicks who dig the old monk type. You don't think so? No. Well, we I did really read don't. 1Q84. I think Yang okay. would be perfect. All for right. Her. All right. So the one <laughs> chick in 1Q84. Uh, what what the fuck was her name? I don't remember. Uh, the character in the book 1Q84, yeah, like Spalding men. Yeah. Um, With nice nice heads. Yeah, nice heads. So, I mean, I I guess she would go for him. But she's if not. If he were played by Vin Diesel, maybe. I don't know. Is Vin Diesel an attractive? I don't know. Man, I have no I don't, idea. I don't. I don't. I can't say I would say that, but I, I honestly can't be. I really think it's between Cecil and Kane. Yeah. And are we going to go with the bad boy Kane or are we going to go with the heroic Cecil? Dude, I want to make it. I want to make it Kane. I think you're right. I think Kane is the winner for that. And because he... I think Kane is a... I think Cecil's a better person. <laughs> well, definitely. <laughs> but I think uh, I think Kane uh, is, is clearly the more sexy. He's got that dark, brooding sort of... I don't know. Right. Until, got, of course, the after years. He's got that mysterious uh, way about it. Right. All right, man. Well, it is... Oh, that is not... That your fucking choices for Final Fantasy V are ridiculous. <laughs> uh, we have Bartz versus Galuf, and uh, I think it's clear <laughs> that Bartz is the winner there. Oh, come on. Especially Bartz from uh, the Final Fantasy V movie. Yeah, that guy's a meat beast. He's fucking he's huge. A, he's a beefcake, is was, what he is. I was looking at him like, my, my god, is that the main dude? Yeah, it's fucking Bartz. But first we gotta decide between the Final Fantasy 3 final and Final Fantasy 4 final contestant. Luneth or Kane? Oh uh, no, it's because that's part of the last, uh, oh yeah, fuck. No, you're right. Luneth versus Kane. Ooh. I think, first of all, the music just got awesome. Bro. Yeah, it did. Kane. Uh, Kane. Come here, I agree. Boy. Kane. Um, moving on to the next round. Luneth has been eliminated. Kane's an adult, so Kane wins. <laughs> yeah, plus Luneth is kind of that silvery haired every character from the early Final Fantasy, so eh, not too not digging it. Final Fantasy V, I think it's obviously hands down Bart's is the sexiest later in the animated movie. <laughs> oh yeah. Um I, I think there's no question. In fact, I think he might be ahead on this one. Now, his name is uh either Butts or Bartz, and the name Butts slash Bartz probably doesn't get you that far. No. Um 
So he's going to have a hard time against the Final Fantasy oh, such VI a hard contestants. Time. Locke, Edgar, Sabin. Oh, fuck. Cyan, dude. Shadow, and Gao. I've I'm going to say <laughs> Gao is. is <laughs> <laughs> Gal is elim- a Gal on there. Gal is eliminated because he probably yeah. hasn't washed his balls ever. <laughs> All right, oh, I think God. Gal's down because that's disgusting. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and say Cyan is a bit too old. I mean, okay, uh, that and he has a ponytail. He's probably balding with a ponytail. You which, think so? Which might be the worst look ever. Now he. <laughs> I'm not saying he definitely is balding with a ponytail, but when I imagine what Scion looks like, Cyan looks like in full 3D. An old, an old, an old balding car. Japanese man with an a... old balding, very muscular Japanese man with a ponytail. Okay, come on, uh, he's gonna be eliminated. All right, I, I agree. Uh, Gao and Cyan, as cool as I think Cyan is, barely have a place on this list. Um, right. Now it gets a little bit tougher. I feel like Shadow has to be eliminated as well because we never really see him. He is a badass, and he does have Interceptor, but that's not... It's not like having a cat. He looks when like you have a, a big dog... He looks like a dark Michelin man. Yeah, yeah, I kind of, yeah. <laughs> in the... In the... In the, um... Uh, the context of the graphics of the game. All right, so Shadow's out. Now it's, it's getting kind of tough. We have Locke, the standard cookie-cutter ladies' man. Okay. We have Edgar, the suave as fuck... Heir, heir to the throne, and we have his brother, the ripped as fuck guy who gave up the throne to go get ripped. All right, so it's an Edward versus um, what the fuck, Jacob sort of situation here uh, versus ooh Locke. Yeah. <laughs> my well, f- my first one that I would eliminate on this is probably going to be Locke. What? Yeah. Oh, I think the lock is the winner. You really think so? I really think so. I think he's got that uh, still brooding over his ex-girlfriend thing going on. He's got the awesome headband. Come on, dude. The headbands are in. Headbands are in. He's also extremely muscular, extremely helpful the way he uh, he treats Tara. Yeah. Um, I think it treats women better than Edgar does. Edgar! And I don't think Edgar's a bad boy either. Like, I don't think Edgar has that edge at all. I think he just likes women and he's rich. Okay, so Edgar, you think he abuses his power to get I, in the... I think so, and I, I think Edward is... I think he laughs at his own jokes. I don't think he's as good as he thinks he is. So, I... So that's me then. You're saying I Edgar think, is Edgar is me. I think it's clearly between Locke and Sabin. <laughs> okay, and I can I can I agree. Don't know. I feel like I feel like Edgar has got a special place in my heart. But I'm sure he those does. are good reasons. All right, those are great reasons. So now we're looking at Sabin versus Locke. Now Sabin seems like the kind of guy who's more into working out and drinking protein shakes than he is uh, the ladies. Okay, so he might actually not be that into ladies. I think he might be a vegetable man, because I didn't get any sort oh, of okay. sexual desires from Saban when well, I played this game. And were Locke, you feeling sexually desirous of <laughs> Saban? Well, no. Okay. I mean, when he suplexed that train, I mean, I wasn't the only one whose <laughs> table rose about six inches. Oh, well, I think that, um, I think Saban has a lot going on for him, but I'm not, I don't I don't know how many women respect or, or don't respect this. Uh, personally, I'm a, I'm a man and I'm also straight, so this makes this difficult because I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But uh, a man who takes his shirt off at every opportunity he has. Douche factor. Is there a douche factor there? I would say yes. Even though he's a good guy. Yes, there is yeah, a douche factor. There's douche there. factor. And also, Locke is probably still pretty in, in pretty good shape, I would imagine. It's more like lean muscle, but he would be... He would probably have a really low body fat percentage with all the stealing yes, running around yeah, he does. Yeah. He would be cut. I, I feel like it's not always about being and this And he wears huge, a fucking headband. It's true. It's not always about being this big meathead guy. Uh, so I think I'm going to second that idea, okay. and I'm going to move right. Locke on. So you were going to eliminate Locke. Look at that. I was. Okay. You got some good options. All right. So Still would. Bartz versus Locke. Um, this is rough. This is rough. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Locke. I'm going to have to go with Locke as well. 
and it's mostly out of a technicality because Bart's is only the super beefcake Bart's in the animated version and not in the Final Fantasy V game. True. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Locke. All right, Locke, you move on to the next round. Goodbye. Goodbye, FF5 contestant. Okay. All right, so now we got this, the third round, or the fourth round. My no apologies. Zach, huh? Uh... No, I didn't put Zach okay. in. I'm just doing main All series. Right. All right. FF7 contestants are Cloud, Barrett, <laughs> Red 13, Sid, Shit. and Vincent. I think Red 13 is taken out mostly because uh, that would constitute us supporting bestiality in some way, some weird bass backwards way. And I'm going to go ahead and say that Red 13 is eliminated. All right. That's, that's okay because Red 13 was the joke option so i'm willing to part with him <laughs> um you know what this is where it gets tough though i mean sid is kind of an older guy he's a little bit over the hill i feel like the way he talks to people is going to make it hard for him to appeal to a younger audience he's not he's not the robert downey jr kind of old guy bad boy he's like he's like the fucking he's, uh, he's a saint woody harrelson yeah. Kind of bad guy, <laughs> older guy, and that's not something that uh, I Woody see. Woody Harrelson would be a perfect <laughs> a casting for Sid. Holy yeah, shit. Way, yeah, you would. Uh, but I don't see that as being a pinup guy. I don't, I don't right. think pinup Woody Harrelson. We got dark, brooding, uh, almost Jack Bauer like character in Vincent. What the? Yeah. Vincent. He does have a lot of baggage, though. He's got all that Lucrezia he shit does. behind And him. it's not like lock baggage. It's different. Yeah, it's yeah. deep. It's more depressing. Plus, the guy's ancient, so. Yeah. And then Barrett. It's kind of an asshole. Like, I, I think Barrett's one of my favorite characters in the series. Okay. But he's not the brightest, and he's kind of a dick. I don't think he would pull... And the, the machine arm. I mean, I can think of some great things to do with that machine arm that would make the ladies love uh, Barrett. <laughs> okay. Like a drink mixer and, you know, oh, a back right. massager. Oh, you know, yeah, you could put all yeah, sorts yeah, of attachments right. on that thing. Okay, okay. What the fuck are you going with that? I don't know. But I'm going to have to take Barrett off. You cool with that? I'm going to take Vincent off. All right, Vincent I off. I think Vincent's... Uh, I think he's past his prime and he's way too depressing. I uh, I agree. So Cloud is also depressing, but I mean, Cloud's ripped. Cloud's young. Yeah, he's hot. That's right. Cloud. I think Cloud is the winner for FF Seven. I second that. Bad choices. <laughs> <laughs> but are the choices worse in Final Fantasy VIII? Well, as far as looks goes, I actually think Final Fantasy VIII has a has like a step up. From yeah, FF7. All yeah. the characters. There's some rugged looking bastards in seven. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Cypher is one of the one of the nominations as well as Laguna, Irvine, Zell. Jesus, Zell is off the list, and Squall. <laughs> Zell Face tats is eliminated. A fucking spaz. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate that Zell. I'm cool with that. I, I didn't want to put him on there anyway. Okay, all right. So now, now we got the the brooding emo guy with the weird jacket. We've got Irvine, the Southern dude. I don't know what I don't know where <laughs> I was gonna go with that. You know, he's kind of he sets himself up as a ladies' man. He's also extremely good looking. I think uh, I think he may be in the closet uh, personally. <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess no one else sees him choke out. I guess the chicks don't see him not be able to shoot the sorceress. No, that's true. That's true. They never see it. So although, like, it's going to be one of those situations where, like, you're a guy and you know that that guy is a complete douchebag. But, but no one believes the you. The women don't. Yeah. They yeah. won't believe you. That sucks. I hate those situations. It happens a lot, actually. <laughs> That is true, yeah. Yeah, a think lot about it, girl. You're like, like, as a guy, you know that another guy is a piece of shit. But not everybody knows. But not everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would say Laguna's also passed his prime <laughs> in the game. Plus, he's kind of an idiot. I am amazed that he was able to... Yeah, Laguna's kind of a moron. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and get Laguna out of there. All right, so now it's just down to Squall, Irvine, and Seifer. C- C- Ooh. <sighs> Squall yeah. is too broody. I think at 14, Squall could get laid, but I don't think at 18, Squall could get laid. You don't think so? No. All right. As well. much as Quistus was like... Uh, Quistus was begging for the Squall. Yeah. I don't know. And 
besides the fact that like that that style of his that emo style it's gonna it's gonna go out oh yeah and he's gonna not go out with it he's gonna stick. no he's gonna stick. he's totally at like 40 years old he's gonna be the guy still with the same hairstyle wearing the same jacket and yeah everything. that damn jacket <laughs> all right so squall we can eliminate i'm i'm cool with that now it's starting to get a little tough i mean we have the ladies man irvine and then we have Seifer, who, who is actually a ladies' man and okay. didn't choke. He did lose in the end, of course, to us. I think Seifer might have some underlying anger problems. So although he might get the chick, he's looking for the chick that is submissive and that he might um, emotionally abuse. Okay. That's what I see Seifer. I think he's I think he's too emotionally unstable. Um, and I think Irvine is, is definitely the better choice, but would you know that going in? Oh man, I don't know. Renoa definitely didn't. Of course she didn't know Irvine, so, but she was down with both the Squall and the Seifer. I think Irvine's more playful. I think he, he'll, he'll be funner to be around. All right. I can, I'm going to go with Irvine on this one. I mean, it's hard. It's definitely a hard choice. You know what? I, I agree. Okay. I don't think uh, I don't think Cipher has quite the strengths that Irvine does. Okay, he's going out. All right, so now we have the final showdown between Irvine and Cloudo. I am gonna go ahead and say Cloud is too mopey, and Irvine is just a load of fun. Okay, uh, and also like. He isn't old enough that the ponytail is a bad thing. I think he might be able to get away with it. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Well, I was thinking... And he also doesn't have to make up for a small penis with a giant sword. True, true. So, I think some people will be able to see through that. Perhaps, yeah. (laughs) You know what? I was going to say Cloud initially, just because I think he's a much better character than Irvine. By, like, miles and miles. But... There are some good points there, and Irvine isn't trying to live vicariously or have someone else's live vicariously through theirs um, and taking on their memories. He doesn't have that kind of baggage. Sure, he chokes under pressure, and he might last about five seconds the first time. (laughs) But you know what? You improve. You get better. Okay. You move on. I don't think Cloud is ever going to really get rid of everything that he's experienced. I mean, it, sure, he can move past a lot of it. Um, the Aerith stuff, personally, I think he's moved beyond. But uh, the the psychological damage that went on with all of his upbringing and like his best friend dying in front of him and to save his life, I think that's going to create a, a certain sort of environment that I wouldn't want to be in if I were choosing one of these two. So I, I will go on and I will accept Irvine okay. as our winner. All right. Moving we, we on. We don't have to flip a coin. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So now we're moving on to FF9, Zidane, Vivi, Steiner, Amaranth, and Cinna. Cinna is the play, the guy in the play that's wearing like the pot. He's like the fat guy. <laughs> I was like, what the, f- who the fuck is Cinna? So right, Cinna yeah, was the joke. He's, a, he's out. Jesus Christ. I'm not even going to acknowledge that one. Um, Amarant, I would say, is probably the second one to go out. I mean, he has those dreads. And honestly... I, I would actually say Vivi. What? Because it's a child and also... It's a doll. He's, it's not human. All right, fine. I'm just saying he can give himself whatever he wants. All right. All right. I'm going to say Amarant's You're going out, Amaranth's too. You're saying going to go. Yeah, he's got those dreads. They're disgusting, man. Like, when I look at corn. I, I think, like, how the long band. has it been? The band, yes, the make band. that clear. The band corn. <laughs> I look at them and their dreadlocks, and it's just gross to me. I'm like, what the f- How long has it been since you washed your fucking hair, man? Like, And when I look at Amaranth, it's the same thing. He's this monk dude that just... I don't know how often he showers. Let's I don't, I don't think white guys should have dreads. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I don't think it works. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Would you defend Amaranth, though? I mean, it is between Amaranth, Steiner, and Zidane uh, right now. I'm not going to put Kuja in this fucking list. I will oh not. My, no, <laughs> fucking no. If we were doing an ambiguous pinup, then sure. It would be him versus uh, Quinn Quen. Zidane is a little teenage boy for me, but yeah. I don't know. There might be like a Justin Bieber aspect to him that some women will like. Uh, Steiner, I think. I thought Steiner was kind of old and fat. 
And so I would actually eliminate Steiner before okay. Amaranth. But I think between Amaranth and Zidane, I think Am- I think Zidane is the unfortunate clear winner. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, Amaranth doesn't put up much of a fight, honestly. He's, like I said, he's kind of gross. Everyone else in nine is weird. Um, the art style took it in a weird way to where, you're right, Steiner is kind of a fat old man who's definitely over the hill and rolling down the hill at a very rapid pace and... I don't know. He does get the ultimate woman in the game, though. I will give him that. So he's got something going on. But this isn't a Beatrix pinup contest. This is the Ultima Final Fantasy pinup contest. Okay. Final Fantasy X. Titus. (sighs) Oren. Yes. Kamari. Waka. (laughs) And Seymour. No! (laughs) Uh, Just get Seymour the fuck (laughs) out of there. Antler man down. Antler man with like the the open. Yeah, he's like, look at everything. Yes, nothing to the imagination. Also, Kimari because you know Kimari. Yeah. Okay, so it's really between Waka, Oron, and Titus. Now Waka obviously has a good. Um, uh, I don't know. Like he's got a. He's got a. He's. Fuck! What? I'm losing words because of this music. Um, Lulu is awesome. Yes. And Waka... Waka's had enough um, clout in order to get with um, soccer balls. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) His music is phenomenal for this. (laughs) Um, Titus... I don't know, man. I don't know. Between these three, I guess I would eliminate Waka because he's kind of... Isn't that disturbing that we're going to eliminate Waka before Oren, who is dead? I think I think Oren might be the winner. I think he would score. I really do. I think he's everything that Cyan can't be. He is the ultimate badass. Okay. First off, he's got a full head of hair. He does. Um, we can see He that. holds his liquor well. Yeah, he's he's very cool. He gets more. He gets more smooth the more he drinks. He does, <laughs> and he is based upon Toshiro Mifune, who is who is an ultimate ladies' man in yeah. like the in, in Japan in the 1950s. Oh yeah, that so, guy is a fucking. He's awesome. So. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, simply based upon the fact that Oron is so close to Mifune. I'm going to go ahead and say Oron actually wins over Titus. That and Titus's uh, voice in both versions is obnoxiously high and annoying. Is it a little much for you? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, it's a little much for me personally. I would not like to share a bed with... Oh, yeah. Can you imagine the sound he would make at the end? (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Horrifying. All right. I'm going to agree with you there. I'm going to say... Oren wins. Oron is is our winner. I'm sure he's like ripped and awesome looking as well. Yeah, I don't doubt that at all. Um, so now it comes down between Zidane and Oren. Oh, you mean it comes down be- to Oron? Yes, because Zidane has just nothing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Or, um, he's he's too young looking. It's uh, it's true. All right, man. So now it's getting to the fun ones. We got Final Fantasy Eleven. The contestants are El Husk, New Boreas. <sighs> The Crinital and the Bandrum. Okay, first off, Bandrum is a Galka. Yeah, I think Bandrum's out. Sorry, man. Uh, you know, we're going to be specious here. Sorry. That's right. We, yeah. <laughs> you, you made this. You chose this. Um, now, Crinital. Crinital is interesting, but Crinital's sense of fashion, I, I don't really care for it that much. Yeah. Um, he always, he's always wearing like the, the fisherman cap, whatever the fuck he's got on his head. Yeah, that's true. It looks it's like one of those things that I know we all have like the same face in the game, so it's like, Yeah. It's really down to what we wear. It's true. Um and I actually think I think Nuborius is is the clear winner with FF11. You think so? Yeah, I think Nuborius is the best dressed. I don't know. I mean, I, I think the warrior character of El Husk. I think El Husk is a little bit. I don't know. I would say 
his, his, his pants are a little too tight and his midriff is showing just a little too much. That was a phase. That was a phase, huh? The phase is done now, but the problem with me now is I'm covered head to toe in plate mail. <laughs> so you can't actually see me. I'm, and it looks awesome. Okay. It's All impressive. Right. It's like the Valiant Knight storming, you know, the castle of the enemies to rescue the princess. But you don't really see much of me. And I... I don't really fit in as a normal dude. Okay. I'll go with, uh, I'll accept the new Boreas You'll answer. accept new Boreas. New, yep. new Boreas I is am, the sexiest character in Final Fantasy XI. I am swimming in my own ball sweat in Final Fantasy XI, I am sure. <laughs> it is hot as fuck in All that right. game. All right, so we got the Final Fantasy XII contestants. We have Bosch. Oh, yeah. Balthier. Oh, yeah. Rex. The dead man. <laughs> Redis. And Vaughn. <laughs> I'm gonna eliminate. I think you can eliminate Von Redis and Rex. <laughs> what in one go? I'm sorry. I, I just don't. All right. I think you might have to. Did you just restart the thing? Because. All right, let it go. It's just different music. <laughs> this is a Ron Jeremy soundtrack. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Moving on. All right. So it's really between Bosch and Balthier. This is tough. This is tough. I think... I don't know. I think Balthier is definitely more of the ladies' man. He's got a lot of confidence that Bosch does not necessarily have. Yeah, and I think it's more because Bosch is after different things in life. Like, Balthier is definitely more... For the ladies, and Bosch is more for his honor and reclaiming yeah, what which was could lost. be which will be sexy to some people. Yeah, um, but I think for the sake of this, I think it's Balthier, uh, personality wise, and you know. Yeah, I'm gonna playful. agree. I think Bosch is m- my preferred character. Yeah, but that's not what we're doing here. We're. Uh, I think he would be a better husband. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Balthier would be like. Sleeping around with all the uh, yeah, there you go. the rabbit women, he's not going to be faithful to Fran. I just know it. All right, so now we have the FF11 character Nuborius versus the FF12 character Balthier. I'll I'll see. It's uh, it's Balthier. It's Balthier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guy is kind of a mute. It makes it tough. Mm. All right, so Final Fantasy 13 contestants: Snow, oh Saz, Hope, and Bartandalus. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bartandalus is the clear winner. Obviously, that uh, guy can no. that guy can rule the world. I'm yeah. gonna get rid of Bartandalus and Hope. I think because <laughs> Hope can't win. Okay, so really, it's between Saz and Snow. The Saz is just too old. Yeah, this one's really easy. And Snow is ripped as fuck. It's true, and as he, annoying as he is, it's true. He does get better throughout the game. I would say, but there is still a certain sense of animosity I felt towards him. Okay. I will I will allow him to move on to the next round though. FF fourteen, we have El Husk and Nuborius Caesar. I'll give it to El Husk. I think he's got the better wardrobe. You think so yeah, with my black I mage do. garb? I do. El Husk, I think, in fourteen is is better. That's true. You're kinda wearing like a dress half the time. You yeah. got your, your robe thing and it looks odd. It's a white robe. Yeah. Ladies. <laughs> Uh, and it's probably not that white with all the running around. Probably not. It's probably disgusting. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Final Fantasy 15. I know we haven't played it, but we do have pictures, plenty of uh, info, plenty of ideas on these four main characters. I could put King Regis in there, but we would just erase him immediately. No, because he's Sean Bean. So. All right. King Regis. I would actually like say King Regis has a shot. Um, okay. I'll start uh, with eliminations oh, here. Class. I uh, think uh, Prompto up, is... What the fuck is that? I don't know. Okay. Fucking commentary track. I think Prompto is too annoying. Um, I agree. He's going to be the annoying blonde character in the game. I would never put him in. Um, now is where it gets oh. kind of tough. Because Gladiolus is a little older. Gladiolus is older. But he's suave. Oh, yeah, he is. And he's also... He knows how to wear leather. <laughs> he does, and he's actually kind of an awesome character so far in everything we've so seen. So far in the uh, in the animated stuff we've seen, yeah. And uh, he can do push-ups uh, while all handstand like, push-ups. Handstand push-ups. <laughs> so he's a freak. Yeah. Um, we have. I, I feel like he's a safe bet. He also wears a suit really well. 
True. Um, you know what? Ingus or Ignis Ingus, whatever. Yeah, but Ignis is pretty. I well, he does have the British accent. He's kind of a pretty boy, Ignis. Not that they're not all pretty boys. Uh, Ignis. I don't know. I think Ignis is pretty sexy as well. He also cooks. Yeah, that's a big hit yeah. with the ladies. Yeah. He's not that macho, though. Like, Gladiolus is way more um, masculine, I would say. Yeah. You know what? It's tough between it's, these. It's got to be a balance between prettiness and masculinity. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that makes it tough. But Glad- Gladiolus can clean up and wear a suit and look awesome. And then he can be a biker and look awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What about Noctis? No, I think Noctis is eliminated. I think so, too, but he isn't a bad character. He's just... I think his uh, his office makes it difficult for him, so I don't think he would really go after it too no, much. I he think, could abuse it, but I don't think he's the kind of guy that would. So. I think he would uh, marry out of political ties. Yeah. <laughs> because and, he has to. And he would be loyal. Yeah. Because his father is, be. uh, is Sean Bean. Yeah. So yeah, now man. it's... I think it's really between... Um, Ignis and Ignis Gladiolus. and Gladiolus as much as uh, Shit. King Regis would be awesome. Yeah, I, you know I mean, what? It's the handstand push-ups. I'm going to go ahead with Gladiolus. I'm going to I'm gonna second that. I, okay. can't, I can't deny the guy. He is a little bit older, but you know what? He's probably in his prime right now. Everyone else is just pre-prime. So, Gladiolus versus El Husk. I'm going to say Gladiolus. Gladiolus. My guy, there was a phase where I had to wear these, like, pantaloon-looking things, and I looked like I belonged in a fucking circus. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I can't choose myself after okay. that. All right. So I'm glad New Boreas and LS have been taken away. All right. So completely. now, phase two, we have Furion versus Kane, the FF2 and FF4 mm, final contestants. Okay. And then our next ones are Locke versus Irvine, Oron versus Balthier, and Snow versus Gladiolus. Shit. All right. Furion oh, and Kane. Ooh, Sephirion is young. He's virile. Um, Kane is older. Um, he's also always wearing his crazy armor. Yeah, his dragoon stuff. Um, That'll cut you up, man. I don't know. Sephirion has the orphan story he could use. Um, he's saved the world before. Yeah, and Kane's probably Kane's still kind of crushed over Rosa, yeah, you know? Kane's kind of a loser sometimes. Yeah, I don't I don't I'm gonna go in and actually, I'm, my vote is with Furion. <sighs> That's tough for me because I love Kane as a character. Mm. But since we're not doing spinoffs, I can second that because Kane gets way more awesome in the after years. Okay, I would say. All right. Um, so we're gonna let Furion move on to the next round. Now we have Final Fantasy VI's Locke and Final Fantasy VIII's Irvine. This Listen, is- uh. Someone's gonna find out that Irvine's gonna blow his load early, or that he just can't do. I just can't. I've never had this much pressure put upon me before. Okay. And I think Locke. I think he's got more experience. I think he's got way more confidence. I think Irvine fakes a lot of his confidence. And Locke's is genuine. Yeah, and it's ponytail versus headband. Headband, Headband wins. Headband wins. Headband does win. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say Locke uh, with those. I second that. I second that so fucking hard. All right. Okay, now we have Final Fantasy X's Oren versus Final Fantasy XII's Balthier. Oh, this is sick. This is when the age actually becomes an issue. Yeah. they both the fact that he's They're dead. both very confident. One of them's more of an extrovert. One of them's more of an introvert, definitely. Uh, they're both very good looking, and they're both in amazing shape, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I'd say Oren's probably in better shape, except for the fact that he's dead. <laughs> Like, if, if he weren't dead, he would be in better shape. <laughs> I'm actually going to go with, I think the personality is going to win out, and I think uh, I think uh, Oron is uh, is going to be eliminated, just I, by a small margin. I was thinking the same thing. Balthier just has what it takes to be the pinup. Um, Oren, a little over the hill, a little, uh, just a little too dead to be the pinup guy. I mean... Balthier just has it all. He's smooth. He's got the age. He's he's got the women. Oren does not have the women. So I mean, that speaks volumes. All right. So now it's between Snow and Gladiolus. Now I think 
Now, just remember that when Snow asked a woman to marry him, he was still wearing the ski cap and the uh, the trench coat with the open chest. Yes. Snow is one of those guys that wears those 50-50 hats that I want to knock off people's fucking heads because they look so dumb. <laughs> and he's also still got the fucking sticker on there. And, and you know what? When he's at a baseball game, he's got it turned backwards and not any sh- shield in his fucking eyes with his hand and not his hat. Snow is also kind of a dumb blonde and Gladiolus that we've seen so far is not a dumb person. No. And he is probably equally fit as Snow, given his ability to defy gravity. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Snow is huge, but... Snow is huge. Gladiolus is... Probably pretty strong. Like yeah. he's not as bulky. He he's can also be, got a lot of experience. Yeah, he's more. He's, he can he's be got, more versatile. He's I would got say. like ten years on snow, if not more. But yeah. I think Gladiolus. I think Gladiolus is clearly the winner between those two. I agree. I think snow. If is I were to fuck one of them, <laughs> I would prefer it to be Gladiolus. Wow. All right. Oh, man. We're getting into the finals, dude. Oh, man. This is tough. Final Fantasy 2's Furion versus Final Fantasy 6's Locke. Actually, this isn't that tough for me. I'm going to go ahead and say Locke. I feel like Locke is more confident than Furion. Furion. I agree. And Locke has more experience. Um, I think they're both pretty confident, but, you know, Furion the seducing thing. I don't know. Yeah, I think Virion's also got the age, the young age is against they're both young characters, but um, Locke seems Firion to be more of an more, experienced more individual. So. Yeah, yeah. In life. But definitely. I, I'm going to go ahead and say with Locke, I'm going to agree with you wholeheartedly, Locke. Okay. Think, it's, uh, it's clearly um, oh, that bracket's uh, winner. So now it's between Balthier and a radio announcer in the background. Yes. Hate this track. I just want porn music, not <laughs> not other stuff. Okay, so we have yes, Final Fantasy twelve is ball here and Gladiolus from Final Fantasy fifteen. Does the age mm. cut Gladiolus out of it? Gladiolus. Well, Balthier is definitely a ladies' man. Like he he lives for that. He does. So I think that there's something to be said about that. He's also a bad boy. He's a sky pirate. He's a fucking pirate, which can go either way. I think with women, they might be like, "Ooh, put off by the pirate." Or they might be really attracted to the pirate. Yeah. It just depends on whether or not their father was around when they were growing <laughs> up. <laughs> well, all the rabbit women definitely know. Caleb Craig thought that was funny. I saw him chuckling over there. Um, yeah, the rabbit women. He might have some weird fetishes, fetishes going, on. going on. But th- then again, they might not know that until they're like in. Well, I mean, they're, I I imagine them as sort of the, uh, like the forest... Uh, Oh. Sylphs or nymphs? I can't remember what which one it is in fantasy. They're the ones that like seduce men. They're nymphs. Nymphs, yeah. yeah. They, they, to breed with them so they can continue because they're all female. That's what that is. And if he can get, if he can really do, if he can do what he does with all of them, he, he I think Balthier wins this. I think Balthier takes Gladiolus. Oh, down. but Gladiolus in a suit. <laughs> yeah, you That's, know, Gladiolus in a suit is good. Shut the fuck up. Use a different track. Don't worry about it. We're almost done here. It'll be done. Just go back. Thank you. Who are you going to choose? Oh, fuck. I was actually going to go with Gladiolus. Were I think you really? going to have to flip a coin on this one. You got a coin? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Flipping a coin. How unprofessional yeah. is this to choose? I'm sorry, man. Neither of us agree. I think Gladiolus is clearly, if I were to fuck one, it would be Gladiolus. Uh... Okay, so you want the manly man and not the... Well, no, they're both manly men. I think one is clearly more masculine than the other. That's true. Yeah. But also, it's bad boy versus good boy. And I think in the long term, good boy is going to win out. And they're both insanely ripped and both insanely handsome. (sighs) So what do I, I like? I don't know, man. Who do I want to be more as well? It would be Gladiolus. Yeah, I suppose if I were to choose which one I would want to be, it would be Gladiolus. I can I can let Balthier fall off. Uh, it's a tough one, though. It is. I think Balthier would have beaten Locke. And because of that, 
I think gladiolus deserve it. Okay, so <laughs> we... <laughs> This is the final round. That's my vote. All right. Well, Going straight into it. Gladiolus versus Locke. Now, I mean, we could be, like, turned around completely by what happens in Final Fantasy XV. Yeah. Not necessarily in Brotherhood slash, you know, what else we've seen in the game. Um, but, uh, is this actual porn going on in the background? Make sure all- I think it was. Okay. And never mind. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um... Oh, yeah, at this point, it's headband versus leather jacket. Tattoo. Yeah. yeah, I think leather jacket and tattoos think, always have a place. Headband. I think he okay. Gladiolus is perfect because he looks like a bad boy sometimes, <laughs> but he's not. So he's your little ball of clay. If you want him to look nice, clean up, he will. If you want him to look like a rugged motherfucker, he will. Yeah. If you want to see him do handstand push-ups, <laughs> he will. It's true. That's true. You cool with that? I think Gladiolus is our winner. All right. The Ultima Final Fantasy pinup contest number two. Bro hour. So really we need a calendar that's for six months out of the year is Quistus. And for the other six months out of the year is Gladiolus. Yeah, we should come up with that. We need some original artwork <laughs> or else we're screwed, but uh, we could do it. Get some seductive photos of, uh, of both and we will make this work. Some surprises on this one, I will say. Some surprises. Uh, yeah, I didn't uh-huh. think uh, I didn't think Gladiolus would have that much holding power, but thinking about it, I don't know. There's, there's not a lot of competition. Like, there is to some extent, but it's not a, there's not an even balance except mm-hmm. for with this guy. Everyone else kind of has one or the other. They're smooth, but they're not super ripped, or they're not cleaned up. Or, yeah. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if you agree with our list, let us know. If you disagree with who we chose, also let us know. Yes. Who do you think uh, belongs as the Ultima Final Fantasy? Pinup? I'm Captain Bosch Man. von Rotzenberg. <laughs> I had him on there for a second, then I was like, nah, <laughs> no, he's not going to win. <laughs> All right, Schweiss. Um, we what? got some questions. We do. Let's get to it. Yeah, so <sighs> level scaling. The first question from our listeners from Taku Amazuki. Would you guys ever want to see the scaling process like they did in FF8 and future titles as a way to keep things from getting too easy? Uh, obviously, now I think they would balance out the scaling to be fair and not game breaking. I wouldn't mind a light touch of this, but I wouldn't want to be punished for the time I spent farming an item or just mindlessly grinding. Thoughts? Uh, they sort of did it with 13. Uh, it's not quite the same, um, but they knew how much experience you were going to have by a certain point in 13. And they had it kind of timed out almost. Um, and they also had blocks in your way. In case yeah, they you were wanted to do more. Caps. They, 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 they capped it so that it would have a consistent um, difficulty as you went along. Yeah, this I, I would say that's the opposite of what they did in 8. And this, in 13, they sort of regulated it to the way to well, where you regulation, couldn't. though. Because 8 was regulation as well. Because 8's regulation is you level up, the other guys level up too. Right, but in 13... Which is so fucking stupid. It, it kind of is, but honestly, I think you could probably still get through the game. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to see that necessarily. Um, I, I, I feel like I'd be more comfortable with something like the Final Fantasy 13 system where you can only get to a certain spot in a certain position of the story um, because then you're not super grinding your way through it. You still get to experience it as a difficult game instead of just going around grinding out a ton of time on super low level enemies and blowing through the game. Now it is fun to find these game breaking glitches like the, uh, the trick in final fantasy 12 farming, Oh, what was that guy's name? I can't remember, but you could use the Phoenix down on him and it would kill him and you zone and then he comes in there and you can kill him again and you get the XP and it's thousands of XP and you can get yourself up to like level 30 
and then go get Fran and Balthier at level 30 when you're normally level 7 to 10, something like that. And the game's just a cakewalk from then on. I'm sure. That yeah. would be fun, and I tried, but I couldn't. Um, <laughs> but I don't think I don't think I would want to see a scaling quite the same way um, they did an FF8. No, but I did just come up with something. I came up with a new system. Okay. Uh, instead of doing what they did with 8, um, just the longer you take to get from the next thing, like it's however many hours you've had in the game, your enemies are also leveling up. And so the faster you get to an area, the weaker the enemies will be. Okay. And also the weaker you will be. But at the same time, if you decide to take 200 hours before you go to the final boss, that boss will get harder and harder it as sounds the time like, goes up. It sounds like Oblivion. Like a, Is that how it works? Kinda, yeah. When you, the main story, um, there was this, there are Oblivion portals to hell, basically. And I was going to go close one, but I got caught up in the hundreds of hours of optional content and leveled up like crazy i was like level 30 something i think and i went back and finally did this town mission where i'm supposed to free the town of kvach and instead of having these little scamp enemies here and there it was like dinosaurs and elementals and it was sick it was like the most difficult mission i'd ever done based upon how much you did in the game it would scale yeah based on how much i would be leveling and like i think uh, i think that actually might be a good system is how much you're doing I would agree, except the fact that I had to become an, a drug addict to beat the area. Like, I had to drink this alcohol called skooma, <laughs> like a fiend. And my intelligence, it like debur- it tears your mind apart. In skooma. real life or in the game? In the, well, both. <laughs> uh, but in the, in the game, your, your character's intelligence is one of the stats. And I think my guy had like four. It was like four intelligence, like 160 strength. So I think that it was wow. like, he was, a, he was messed up because of this, so... Uh, that is kind of a cool concept though. And that way you're, you know, you're kind of pushed to do the main story and it's not get lost in uh, side quests forever. All right. What are the other six? Um, Shinru says, didn't like that feature. Hope they never bring it back only for bosses. I guess it's an okay feature. And FF seven, you are max level and go fight Sephiroth. You will fight a higher, more difficult version of him. So stuff like that I'm okay with, but not random enemies. Yeah, but it doesn't just scale (laughs) in eight. It like multiplies. Um, because when the enemies level up higher, their stats are even better than what your stat increases are. Yeah. So a 99 level Ultimacia is so much worse than a, than if you're at 99, than if Ultimacia is at 50 and you're also at 50. Yeah. Um, That's ridiculous. It is. It's crazy. Batman 2J says the scaling feature in FF8 helped alleviate the grinding for levels aspect of the game. But when I play FF, I personally like to get way too overpowered and destroy everyone I want. I know it takes the challenge out of the game, but to me, the challenge is to see how badass I can get. I hope they don't bring it back and find other ways to make games scale to how the developers want. Similar to the sphere grid in Final Fantasy X, where the key spheres are simply no ability sphere drops prevent you from advancing too far on the grid. (laughs) There's that 10 pretending it's not a hallway uh, again um so final fantasy um eight i don't oh man it's so bad i i, I actually think the final fantasy five version of all this problem is the best or final fantasy nine yeah where the game is perfectly playable and beatable and then the final boss is sick yeah and it's like oh well you could have been doing this better this whole time but instead you waited and i don't know like there's something about that that i think is um I think I think there's something about making the final boss just way bigger than anything you would expect. Yeah, uh, it is it is one thing that I am okay with. I'm okay with that being crazy instead of the whole game. Yeah. So that's a good point. All right, so we have another one here from um, Knox at 988 titled Dungeon Additions to Remix. As many of you are aware, games like FF1, 2, and 4 have been remade several times. Others, such as 5 and 6, have been ported to the Game Boy Advance and recently remade for iOS and Android devices. In many of these cases, developers add additional dungeons with super bosses, better gear, or fan service content. Do you like these additional dungeons, or would you prefer um, the would you prefer that they simply updated the game without them? I personally don't like most of the additional dungeons that have been added. I recently played through FF4, the complete edition on the PSP, and found the additional content much less fun than the original game content. I'm currently playing through FF1, Dawn of Souls, and the extra dungeons are much worse than the in-game content. I haven't played the FF5 or 6 extras, but I expect much of the same at this point. I suppose I don't have a problem with the extra stuff. Uh, You do need an extra reason to buy the game, but it seems like 
the additions are half-assed attempts to make the game more appealing. Instead, they create the contrived areas that rarely fit the feel of the game. I was curious if you guys felt the same. Um, I haven't done any of the extra dungeons in the um, the newer versions. Uh, there was one available in FF3 that I did not try. Uh, did you? Um, I I did a couple dungeons in FF3. I'm not sure if it was one of the ones that was exclusive to. No, after you beat the game, there's a dungeon that gets opened up. I think. I don't know. Yeah, and it, it's the same thing happens. FF2 actually had a whole storyline after the end of the game, and yeah. the, I can't remember which version it was, but uh, we didn't do those because we felt like we had beat the game, and that's extra stuff. And if we want to do extra stuff, we do it. Um, but there's no. I don't think necessary need to. And I, I actually disagree. I don't think that's, I think that's an added bonus to the game. Like if you're a real big fan of FF, whatever FF four, yeah. and they decided to add an extra dungeon and a new release. And you were like, Oh fuck. Yes. Another reason to play FF four. I, I think that's actually a good thing. Um, besides the fact that they're probably going to update the graphics and make it more playable and all that other shit. Right. Um, uh, my personal reasons for buying a new version of a certain game are because, okay, I want to play this game. This system is kind of my go-to system right now, and thus I will get it on this system now uh, instead of getting out the old So system. would you would you pick up FF7's remake for PS4 if it was on sale? It was like 10 bucks. Uh, if 10 I bucks. were employed, yes. Okay. I, I've been enjoying it, and it's not because they're extra content. It's because I can do times three speed and uh, oh, okay. tear through the game. Um, I the, would do it because if I decided I wanted to play FF7 right now, I would definitely buy it on PS4. With the times three. Because it has nothing to do with the times three. It has to do with its availability on the PS4. Okay. And the PS4 is what's hooked up to my TV right now. Yeah, that's And fair. it's the easiest thing to switch to. And so 10 bucks is not that big of a thing uh, to get that. All right. I think that's all right. Um, it looks like the listeners, for the most part, love extra dungeons. Um, they're big fans of them. And, yeah, we haven't really done a bunch ourselves, so it's kind of a up-in-the-air subject. But uh, the the ones that I have done, it's it's been fine. It's not. It wasn't some sort of mega thing that uh, made me you know, inspired by the game or changed my opinion of the game. It was just, oh, cool, there's more content. So we went with it. All right, Choice. Um, before we wrap up this episode, do we have any iTunes reviews? Oh, you know what? We do. Oh. Thank God. iTunes reviews. iTunes reviews. Oh, yes. We have a five-star oh, review here. Oh, thank God. From Canada. Oh! It's titled, Let's Mosey, by Stephen R.C. You get your Canadian terms out of here. All right. <laughs> I'm so glad I found this entertaining. What? Informative. I can't do it. I, I want to do the Fargo, but I can't. Oh, I, I can't. It sounds Irish. It does. I can't. <laughs> I'm so glad I found this entertaining, informative <laughs> podcast. John, oh, yeah. the Canadian. He's an Irish Canadian. <laughs> Joe and Caleb are passionate, thoughtful, and funny. I... The mood is relaxed and welcoming, oh. as if chatting with old friends. <laughs> Ultima Final Fantasy has quickly become my favorite podcast, and I look forward to each new episode. A, a, <laughs> add the a, and you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Oh, I'm glad it's become your favorite podcast. I, I appreciate that. Yes, uh, we love it. Thank you yes. so much. And for thank your you review. for sending us a review, uh, our dear Canadian listener. Yes, and you're Irish, of course. Um, <laughs> you want to read this next one here? Can you? Yeah, you want to knock my camera over? I do. Okay. Um, it says good podcast, good house, a uh, four star oh. review uh, by Stud. Five five four one. Uh, these hosts aren't necessarily the prototypical introverted gamer type. They seem very extroverted and the type of guys you want to, to talk Final Fantasy with, and then go get blacked out with it at the bar. Okay. Schweiss, um, I would be down. Talking, I think he's mostly talking about you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I got the hiccups. Uh, they seem like they have fun with the show sometimes, and, <laughs> and it's very 
interactive with the fans slash listeners. Oh, I'm Ooh. glad he knows the fans slash listeners argument. It yeah. seems like there's because yeah. uh, we had this uh, discussion on nude clan and some people might have seen it in the forums, but it's it's about whether or not we should call our listeners fans or if we should call them listeners. And when we started this podcast, you used to call them fans. And then I got on you about it. Because I was like, dude, they're listeners. They're not necessarily fans of but us. But now we know there are. That there are so, there are there were people on the forum who claimed that they were in fact fans and not just listeners. Yes. So we I, I appreciate that. Um, and if you're a listener, that's fine too. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's whatever. If you want to listen to the guys go in depth with the series and not bore you to tears, listen to these guys. All right. We have another one here from America. Great podcast from Bryant Roberts on September 6th, 2016. Great Final Fantasy podcast that deals with the main <laughs> series, spinoffs, and other Final Fantasy related media. Thank you very much uh, yes. for your five-star review, and thank you, Stud, for your four-star review. Yeah, we appreciate it a lot, guys. It helps us more than you could possibly know. All right. Oh, so, uh, our last thing twice. Yes. Before we, before we say goodbye, we got a question from us. To you. Do we? Do we really? Yes. I thought we were going to do it. ago i asked what child character from the series annoys you the least <laughs> here are the answers shinru says vivi not one thing you can hate about vivi he is one awesome kid Krile, at first i thought no one could replace my man galoof but she joined up and is pretty cool and is smart and not just some dumb kid plus the fact that she looks up to galoof makes me yeah it makes her a cool kid in his book all the final fantasy five characters are kids though. <laughs> yeah rydia even though she's only Except a child for, for a small part of the game rydia is pretty awesome i go in final fantasy nine i find her kind of funny like an actual little girl would be plus she has a sad dark backstory that takes you by surprise when you then you understand why she tries to act so happy and carefree all the time i kind of hated the 40 minutes that we had to deal with aiko um cooking and shit so yeah yeah not all right my favorite all right so felicia nomiko says radio was indeed far less annoying than the newer ones of the 3d games yuffie is the least annoying it feels like each new young character gets more annoying as we go maybe my tolerance for such crap is thin as i get older but gods the mood swings are so wild and erratic <laughs> that i i just can't even I have to wonder how much of this is cultural and perhaps a symbolic archetype that doesn't have an analog in Western mythos. I definitely notice that it is a far more prevalent character type in Japanese games and anime than in Western games. Even Lollichop, Lollipop Chainsaw, ugh, great game by the way, which has the cheerleader archetype as the main character, has the titular FMC acting more her own age than her Japanese game counterpart. Looking at Japanese character types, the stupid, bouncy chipper kid is just one of an array of character types. It's Annoying also is a real type of person I hate. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah, I hate them in real life too, don't worry. Annoying is balls to be sure, but at least it's not every character. Yeah, right. So, uh, Fat Chocobo says, I would say Larsa, but I haven't finished 12 yet and I don't want to jinx myself. Although he's naive, he doesn't come off as overly bubbly and innocent like most of the kids in the series. Instead, his child is a childish idealism is challenged by various events in the game, such as the death of his father, uh, crossing my fingers that I don't regret these words later. Uh, otherwise, probably Vivi. I know Yuffie's personality is pretty annoying, but I enjoy the side quests uh, in Mutai when she steals your materia and gets kidnapped by Don Corneo. Fair enough. Fair enough. Gabrant says, hope from FF13. Just kidding. I'm out of my motherfucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> Love the game, but no way. He would agree and go with Rydia. 
A lot of the others are annoying or, well, just kids. And when we first meet Rydia, she's a beastly little thing that wants vengeance for killing her mother's dragon. Others, just to mention, Larsa was great and quite the diplomat. I always liked Gao. He reminded me of a human <laughs> Taz when I was younger. And I don't really mind Vaughn, although I'm in agreement that Bosch should have been the main character. Uh, Caleb Craig says, Pinello, far more likable than Van and quite the beast with a katana. She is good with the katana, but I still hate her character doesn't need to be Corey says gal from ff6 his scenes were funny he wasn't really involved in the story so he didn't take away from the game like other child characters have i am sort of sensitive to stories about kids with douchebag dads gal's dad was a huge douchebag i also liked the relationship he formed with cyan i was asked about the age cap and ages below 13 stola said ff3 alice restoridia palum porum Crele, Realm, Mog, Gao, Vivi, Eco, and Larsa. You know, I don't like Gao. I really don't. Um, uh, he's kind of a throwaway character in Six, and also he's Gollum from uh, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't too into Gao either. I thought he was kind of dumb. If we're looking at ages below 18, starting from 3... Uh, Lunith, Ark, <laughs> Refia. Most of the main characters. Ignis, yes. <laughs> yeah. Seraph. Aria, Bennett, Yuffie, Squall, Renoa, Selfie, Irvine, Zell, Zidane, Garnett, Titus, Yuna, Riku, Vaughn, Pinello, Rex, blah, blah, blah. Out of all of them, he thinks Vivi, hands down. He's all probably right. the best written character in the main installments. Monologue he gives at the ending was probably the most emotional he's ever gotten with an FF. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, Schweiss, I yeah. think that's going to be it for our episode today. Uh, our question from us to you this week, do you have one? So nope. I got one otherwise. Go for uh, it. My question from us to you, ladies and gentlemen, is because we just finally finished our pinup series, unless we want to go into androgynous slash uh, non-human character pinup, which now that I said it might have to be a thing. Yeah. Um, who of all Final Fantasy characters are your sexiest woman, sexiest man, and sexiest beast slash brownest <laughs> character in the series? Um who would be your choice pinup? Okay, sweet. Okay. Well, uh, make sure you guys check us out at youtube.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy, fi- facebook.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy, twitch.tv slash Ultima Final Fantasy. You can tweet me at Joseph Vigalier. Me at UFF Podcast. Uh, you can go to patreon.com and just search Ult- Ultima Final Fantasy and support the show. If you give us a dollar uh, a month, you can uh, get the episodes as soon as we're done mixing them. And otherwise, to support the show, you can go to our website, ultimafinalfantasy.com, click through our Amazon banner, and um, just just use Amazon like you do normally and we get a small kickback. We also want to thank a new patron from this week, Vincent. Thank you so much for your contributions to our show and we look forward to having you eventually on the show. Oh, we're going to have him? Oh, on the show. Okay, all right, all right. Yes, thank you very much, Vincent, and to all of our Patreon donors. uh, uh, This show is is made possible by you guys, our costs. How much do we spend? I think with the website and everything, I think we're spending, uh, I want to say like a hundred bucks, something like that. Yeah? Yeah, like we're... We're spending a lot more money on the show than we used to. Yeah, but it's better. But I I I think it shows. Um, and uh, last but not least, call us at 385-204-3921-385-204-3921. This was a good episode, Schweiss. Yes, it was. We'll see you guys next week. Until then, enjoy the pinup grind. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show is produced by Joseph de Gaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph de Gaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show and look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.